right, Billy Cunningham, let's continue now. Uh, the first order of business is the big speech of uh, Barack Hussein Obama, given uh, in the Middle East and Cairo specifically. And joining me now, I think, is one of my favorite guests ever when it comes to radical Islam and things of that character. That is Bridget Gabriel, author of They Must Be Stopped, Why We Must Defeat Radical Islam and How We Can Do It. She's also founder of actforamerica.org, act, A-C-T, for America.org. And Brigitte Gabriel, welcome again to the Bill Cunningham Show. Thank you, Bill. I'm honored to be with you. Uh, let's talk again about, uh, about Obama. Uh, what do you think about the speech? Uh, you mean Barack Hussein Obama? Well, see, I got in trouble for doing that. Uh, I, I, I can't the man, say. The man, we wouldn't dare mention his Islamic background and his Islamic ties and his pride and his Islamic heritage and that his family is Muslim. We couldn't talk about these issues when he was running during the campaign. Yet today, Obama is flaunting, flaunting his Islamic background as a badge of honor across the Islamic world, trying to extend bridges, misusing facts, talking about how we have uh, 7 million Muslims living in the United States and how that makes America one of the uh, biggest Muslim countries in the world. What type of nonsense is this? Here is my issue with the Obama speech in Cairo that he gave this week. What he talked about was basically, he inflamed the Islamic numbers in the United States. He said, we have in America 7 million Muslims, which is total lie. These numbers are inflated by CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations and different Islamic organizations. We only have 2.3 million Muslims living in the United States. Yeah. Second, he talked about respect. He mentioned respect at least 10 times in his speech. What respect is he talking about? The Muslim world despises the United States. They have no respect for us. They think we are morally corrupt. We are morally bankrupt. We have gays that march in the streets, abortion on demand. We have, um, uh, you know, Britney Spears dancing half naked on television with a snake wrapped around her. So the Muslim world has no respect to the way we live. Not to mention the rights we give to women to basically run for office, become elected officials, get an education, get a job, be their husbands equal, uh, have a right to vote, which, which is non-existence in the Arabic world. So, you know, and he also talked to Muslims about uh, what their religion really means. Why is it the job of the President of the United States to tell Muslims what their religion is all about? Why don't we let them tell us with their actions what their religion is all about? Uh, and one thing uh, oh, that is very important that also irked me in his speech is he didn't mention once terrorism or radical Islam ring to terrorism. So, you know, here's a quick rundown of my opinion of his speech. Yes. Well, uh, LaBridge, let me ask you this. Uh, relative to his campaign and then the way he's presenting himself to the Islamic world, uh, there were pictures of him in the turbans. There's the fact out there that he was raised in Jakarta, Indonesia, that he worshipped in, in mosques, that he read from the Quran as a little boy. All that is well known to those who want to read. Well, why, when he ran for the presidency, did he almost deny that existence of those facts? But when he's, he's in the Islamic world, he always talks about how he's part of their world, when really, he just declared the other day that America is not a Christian nation. Now he's saying America is the biggest Muslim, one of the biggest Muslim countries in the world. Why now is he talking about his Muslim roots when most of the American people don't even know about it? Well, because while he was running for the campaign and he wanted to beat President Bush and get the presidency, he was using the youthful idiots in this country who had no knowledge of history, who are getting their news from the Comedy of, uh, Central Network, and who basically, the only TV that they watch is American Idol. That's the problem. He needed their boy votes in order to get elected. Now, most people minding their own business in this country, and, and those in the center who voted for Obama because they wanted change, did not really watch uh, the news that spoke about his Islamic background. So they were not hearing that end, and because it was important for them, America as a Judeo-Christian country, as a country founded on Judeo-Christian principles, he knew that they were not going to vote for him if, if he spoke about his Islamic background, and he needed that centrist block in order to get elected. So that's why he avoided it while he was running during the campaign. After he became elected, he didn't care. He's already there, and he is doing whatever he wants to do, and I bet you, Bill, I am sure, I actually talked to a lot of people who, who were in the center, who voted for Obama, even though they were, you know, conservative on other issues, thinking, well, well, maybe we do need a change in this country. Maybe we do need someone like Obama to come in, to reach out to the Arabic world. We tried it the George Bush way. It didn't work. Maybe we need to do something different. And I tell you, right now, they are regretting it. I have conversation with them. And I ask them, different people, what do you think about Obama now? Including Jewish people who voted for Obama thinking, right. well, he's never going to sell Israel down the drain. Well, I've got news for everybody. Oh. He is selling Israel down the drain. Well, what do you well, think about him saying that Iran has the right to access peaceful nuclear power? No president has ever said that a country like Iran or or North Korea should have access to nuclear power. Isn't that a change in American policy? And isn't that quite dangerous? 
Uh, it is very dangerous, and it's a huge change in American policy. And here is why it is dangerous. If Iran needed nuclear power for energy, Iran would have hired a company that would have provided it the nuclear power for energy, and they would have had that in four years. They do not need to be developing nuclear bombs the way they are developing nuclear bombs and saying repeatedly that their goal is to wipe Israel off the map. See, here we have an enemy in Iran, Bill, that is very open. They do not have hidden agendas. They tell us exactly how they feel. They're not lying. They're not deceiving. We are the ones who are refusing using to listen to them. But here's another important point that many people are not discussing about what is driving the Iranian nuclear agenda. What makes Iran very different than Russia, for example, where we had the mutually assured destruction back then, which prevented Russia from attacking us because they knew they were going to be killed. In Iran, what is driving them is a messianic vision of bringing back their Islamic messiah or the Mahdi. Iran has been preparing for the return of the Mahdi, whom they believe the only way he can come back is basically by creating a catastrophe where millions of people die, and that will usher in the return of the Mahdi. The Iranians are so obsessed with this theory that Iranian television for the last four years has been airing programming, preparing the people for the return of the Mahdi. Businesses in Iran have been preparing for the return of the Mahdi. This has been not only the mullahs, but the whole nation getting ready for the return of the Islamic savior in order for Islam to reign supreme. Now, Iranian Shiite Muslims believe they can actively participate in bringing back their messiah. Even though the Messiah theory exists in all major religions, like the Jews believe the Messiah is going to come one day and we're going to have peace on earth, the Christians believe that Jesus is going to come back one day and we're going to have peace on earth, but there is nothing we can do as Jews or Christians to basically hasten the return of our Messiah. In Islamic and Shiite Islam, you can actively participate by basically creating the catastrophe required around the world in order to usher in the new era of peace throughout the world uh, where Islam rules, and that's what's driving the Iranians. So no matter what Obama said, about, let's talk about respect, and let's talk about um, your right to develop nuclear for energy. The Iranians could care less about energy right now. They feel they are on a divine path to bring about the end of the world for peaceful rule supreme, and they're not going to listen to Obama. Bridget Gabriel, uh, last Sunday, a, an abortion doctor named George Tiller was gunned down in his church, which I thought was a terrible act, and it should not have occurred. A day later, Abdul Hakim Mohammed in Little Rock, Arkansas, a black Muslim radical who spent time in Somalia, gunned down in uniform an American soldier in Little Rock, Arkansas. The media covered the death of George Tiller like it was a major event. ABC, NBC, CBS. The media has not given the same amount of coverage to the murder by Abdul Hakim Muhammad, who was born uh, someone named Leroy, uh, because he killed an American soldier. Why does the media think it's so much more important uh, when a an abortion doctor is killed, as opposed to an American soldier in uniform shot down by Islamic terrorist. Uh, because the media does not want to acknowledge the growth of homegrown terrorism, because if they would cover the story and give it equal time as they give the abortion uh, a, a, a doctor, that means they're going to have to acknowledge that we do have terrorists within the Muslim community in the United States who are plotting our destruction and plotting to hurt Americans. So in order for them to acknowledge that, that will in a way justify what the Bush administration has been talking about for eight years, that we do have a problem with homegrown terrorism and radical Islam throughout the world. The other problem we have, Bill, is the media has been infiltrated by Muslims taking journalism classes and now working on every level in our media. They are working uh, as producers, as writers. Uh, uh, some of them are as news anchors on CNN and, 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 and different uh, liberal media channels. And because of that, you're not going to see emphasis on, on homegrown terrorism in the United States because they do not want it to be that way. The other problem we have with the media is because of the Saudi infiltration and funding of our universities for the last 10, 15 years, they have pumped millions of dollars, setting up Middle East study departments and political science departments, teaching American students that America is bad, Islam is good, Israel is bad, our foreign policy is bad. So now, 10, 15 years down the road, after all this education and brainwashing in our universities, those students who have been graduating out of these universities, out of these specific departments, are now occupying the major positions in the media. They are the news chiefs, they are the news editors, they are the news writers, and they are coming to this basically brainwashed with the Saudi twist as to what America is all about, and now we are reaping the result of this twisted education on our national media, brainwashing the future generation. And, and Bill, it's all a part of the Muslim Brotherhood plan, which I discuss in detail in my book, They Must Be Stopped.